is Deanne. Today we're going to talk about part two of life substances. We've already addressed proteins and carbohydrates. Now we're going to discuss lipids and nucleic acids. So lipids are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Really what lipid means is fat. So we're talking about fats, oils, waxy substances, anything that is fat. The building block of lipids are called fatty acids. So if you take many fatty acids, connect them together, you will get a lipid. You can look at the chemical structure of a lipid. I just wanted to show you how large the molecule is. It's a very, very large molecule. Here's the role of lipids in living things. Really what they do is they're used for storing energy for one thing, uh, sort of the same function as carbohydrates, but they will also perform this as well. They're also insulation, which means that you may have a, a layer of lipids under your skin that would help to keep you warm. And they also are going to be a major component of the cell membrane. So the outer portion of the cell has a lot of lipid in it. So lipids are a very important part of your diet that you do need to have fat in the diet because these are all very important functions. <clears throat> There's two different types of lipids that we can make a differ differentiation on. We have saturated lipids and unsaturated. Saturated means that they are solid at room temperature, like butter. If you take butter out and at room temperature, it will be solid. Um, and those are animal fats or shortening or lard, things like that. Really what this means chemically is that all the carbon atoms are linked by a single bond. So they, that's why it's considered to be a saturated fat. This is showing the chemical structure of a saturated. Notice all the carbons are linked by a single bond, um, as opposed to the unsaturated, which we'll be discussing in just a moment, where you have a double bond in here. So that one small thing makes their behavior very different. Saturated fat is actually not something you want to have a lot of. It's not good in the diet. It can lead to clogging of arteries, um, cardiac problems. Uh, so it's not something you want to have a great deal of. Unsaturated fats tend to be liquid at room temperature. Oils, uh, most oils come from plants like uh, sesame oil or olive oil, corn oil. So those are plant-based. And the chemistry is a little different in that the carbons are held together by double bonds, not all single bonds. And these tend to be better for you. Uh, they're more heart healthy. They're not going to cause as many uh, problems with clogging arteries because they come from plants as opposed to the saturated, which come from animals. The last life substance we're going to address is nucleic acids which is a little different than the previous three because the previous three really dealt with diet and things that you might consume. Nucleic acid does not fit into that category. It's very important, so it is a life substance. It's something we all need to have in our body. But w what it really is, is it's your DNA, is what this is referring to. Uh, the building block are going to be called nucleotides. And even though you don't eat something that gives you DNA, it's something that you were born with that makes you you that is considered a life substance, but it's sort of in its own category. The role of nucleic acid has to do with genetic information because, again, we're talking about DNA. It stores, transmits all the genetic information that makes you a unique individual. Really, we're talking DNA here. So every single person has their own unique DNA that came from their parents. And so it kind of, like I said earlier, doesn't fit into the other groups, but it is an important life substance. And then here's showing just what a molecule of DNA looks like. It's a, they call it a double helix. It looks kind of like a twisted ladder. And that concludes our presentation on lipids and nucleic acids.